the hat, and the super glue. The following morning, just before the father left his beastly, uh, for his beastly secondhand um, garage, car garage, Matilda slipped into the cloakroom and got a hold of his, the hat that he wore each day to work. She had to stand on her toes and reach up as high as she could with a walking stick in the other um, in order to hook the hat off the peg. And even there, then she's only just made it. The hat itself was one of those uh, flat topped pork pie jobs with a J feather stuck in it um, in the hat band. And Mr. Worm was very proud of it. He thought it gave him a, a rackish daring look, especially when he wore it on an angle with his loud check, uh, checked jacket and green tie. Matilda, holding the hat in one hand and a thin tube of super glue in the other, proceeded to squeeze a line of glue very neatly all around the inside of the rim of the hat. Then she carefully hooked the hat back on the peg with the walking stick. She timed this operation very carefully, applying the glue just as her father was getting up from the breakfast table. Mr. Wormwood didn't notice anything when he put the hat on, but when he um, arrived to the garage, he couldn't get it off. Super glue is a very powerful stuff, so powerful it will take the skin off if you pull too hard. Mr. Wormwood didn't want the scalp um, to be scalped, so he had to keep the hat on his head the whole day long, even when putting sawdust in the gear uh, gearboxes and fiddling with the mileage of the cars with his electric drill. In an effort to save face, he adapt, adopted a casual attitude, hoping that his staff would think he was actually meant to keep his hat on all day long for the heck of it like a gangsters do in films. When he got home that evening, he still couldn't get the hat off. Don't be silly, his wife said. Come here and I'll take it off for you. She gave the hat a sharp yank. Mr. Wormer let out of a yell that rattled the window panes. Ow, he screamed. Don't do that. Let go. You'll take half my skin off my forehead. Matilda nestled in her usual chair was watching the performance over the rim of, a, um, of her book with some interest. What's the matter, Daddy, she said. Has your ha head suddenly swollen or something? The father glared at his daughter with a deep suspicion, but said nothing. How could he? Mrs. Wormwood said, said it to him. It must be super glue. I couldn't be anything else. That'll teach you to go playing around with those nasty stuff that you, like that. I expect you were trying to stick another feather in your hat. I haven't touched the flaming stuff, Mr. Wormwood shouted. He turned and looked again at Matilda, who looked back at him with huge, um, huge innocent brown eyes. Mrs. Wormwood said to him, you should read the label on the tube before you start messing with dangerous products. Always follow the instructions on the label. What in heaven's name are you talking about, you silly person? Mrs. Derwin um, shouted, clutching the brim of his hat to stop anyone um, trying to pull, off, pull it off again. Do you think I'm not silly? I glue this thing to my head on purpose. Matilda um, said, there's a... Matilda said, there's a boy down the road who got some super glue on his fingers without knowing it, and it, then he put his finger up um, into his nose. Mr. Wormwood jumped. What happened to him, he, uh, he spluttered. The finger got stuck inside his nose, Matilda said, and then he had to go around for a week. People kept say, uh, saying to him, stop picking your nose, and he couldn't do anything about it. And he looked awful, like an awful fool. Serves him right, Mrs. Wormwood said. He shouldn't have put his fingers up there in the first place. It's a nasty habit. If all children had super glue put on their fingers, they'd so uh, soon stop doing it. Matilda said, grown-ups do it too, Mommy. I saw you doing it yesterday in the kitchen. That's quite enough for me, Mrs. Wormwood said, turning pink. Mr. Wormwood had kept his hat on all through supper in front of the television. He looked ridiculous, and he stayed very silent. When he went up to bed, he tried again to get the thing off. So did his wife. But... It wouldn't budge. How am I going to have a shower, he demanded. You'll just have to do it with, the, with uh, do without, won't you, his wife told him. And later on, as she watched his, her skinny little husband sulking um, around the bedroom in his purple striped pajamas with pork pie hat on his head, she thought how silly he looked. Hardly kind of man a wife dreams about, she told himself, told herself. Mr. Wormwood discovered that the worst thing about having a permanent hat on his head was having to sleep in it. It was impossible to lie comfortably on the pillow. Now do stop fussing around, his wife said to him after he had been tossing and turning for about an hour. I expect it will be loosened by morning and then we'll just slip it off easily. But it wasn't loose by the morning and it wouldn't slip off. So Mr. Uh, Mrs. Wormwood took a pair of scissors, um, took a pair of scissors and cut the thing off his head bit, um, bit by bit. First the top of the brim and then the brim, then the inner band had stuck to the hair all around the sides. She had to chop the hair off the right, um, right to the skin. So he finished up with a bald white ring around the edge of his head, like some sort of monk. 
and um, in the front where the band had stuck directly to the bear skin there remained a whole lot of small patches of brown leathery stuff no amount of washing would get off at breakfast Mil matilda said to him you must try to get those bits off your forehead daddy it looks as though you've got little brown insects crawling about all over your all over you people will think you've got lice be quiet the father snapped just keep your um nasty mouth shut will you all all in all it was the most satisfactory um, exercise, but it was surely too much to hope that it taught his father a permanent lesson.